takes a little bit of effort to get the shop ready. And yes, I do share a shop with the cat toilet. So the total cost of this build was under around $40. Once you get your what you want built, you can start to replace the melamine with actual wood uh, in some circumstances, some hardwood. You'll see at the very end of this wood video where I actually use some oak. Uh, when I started this project, it was really cold outside and I do not have a heater in my garage. So I was really just trying to hold on to this pen and uh, these metal tools without uh, uh, being in a ton of pain. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, get this hole started for the dust collection and then the central hole for the router bit using a, a Forstner bit. If you don't have a set of Forstner bits, I highly recommend that you get some. Uh, I, once I got them, I started using them all the time. So for this, I'm just using an upcut bit and just going through and uh, picking out the, the melamine in this hole here. It pops out pretty quick, so it's really, really pretty fast. Of course, make sure you file down any burrs that you have. I'm just going to take this down to a final size here. Uh, your size may be different because of uh, the, the router that you have, so I, I can't really give you a specific size on it. Now I'm cutting my rails out of this melamine and I'm going to use the slick surface from the, the front of the shelf basically. Uh, whatever you make your rails out of, just be sure that they're the exact same width. Oh and a little tip here, that melamine is super slick so if you take some tape and put it on there it will uh, keep your fingers from sliding into the blade. So I'm sanding down this rail to make it as smooth as I can because I want it to slide uh, absolutely as best as possible. So a real main part of this build is really getting these, uh, these what I call sliders. They're going to attach your rails together. Oh. Ah, nice. They're going to attach your uh, rails together, but uh, they're going to give it that gantry motion sliding um, along with the, uh, the grain of your project as opposed to across it. So this is really all about just figuring out how wide your rails are going to be and then building the wheels to fit perfectly and glide. You can see that one I got perfect. This one I ended up having to take apart and recut that center piece because it just wouldn't fit there. But once I got it recut, stuck it on my rails and they moved perfectly. I was really happy with this. Take some sandpaper and make sure that I run it over these just to try to get any of those loose burrs off of there. So this rail here is going to serve a couple of purposes. It's going to help keep the, uh, the whole board from sagging in the middle. And it's also going to provide kind of a guide for this little uh, knob I'm sticking in here that will allow you to lock down the sled. And it can actually provide uh, kind of a handle to grab when you move it. And the other thing it's going to do that you'll see here in just a little bit is it's going to keep it uh, keep your router from in the, the cradle 
I guess you could call it, keep it from jumping out of that thing. So I ended up getting a, a one inch bit. Whatever size bit you have, I think you want to move half of the width of that bit went on every pass and probably not more than that. I'm not really an expert on that, but that seems to be uh, what I found. Now I started with the smallest bit that I could get for surfacing because I didn't know if this would work, but I'm definitely going to get a bigger one in the future. Pull it this way and do it just like that. Okay, so I actually just need to take out a little notch right there so that my router will fit because it's not, it doesn't go all the way down inside the, inside here. There we go. That's perfect. That's all I needed. got this piece secure we've got a piece here that swivels take our router put it on there swivel the piece there your router is not gonna get tossed out if for some reason it hits something solid So kind of the basics of just uh, using a router sled, which I found out, was that you really need to make sure you find a way to secure your wood uh, to the base. And you're also going to want to shim it so that it you don't want any movement in your router sled, or sorry, <laughs> in, your, uh, in your wood. So now we get to the fun part, which you're here to see. So this is a normal speed, and I wanted you to see this because a lot of times when you see uh, advertisements or videos for router sleds, they speed up. Uh, this is actually how long it takes to take a signal pass. So this is uh, actually a piece of oak that I'm uh, testing this out on. And you can see just a little tiny ridge there, but man, this thing's coming out smooth. 